This is Sony's HXR NX100 camcorder, a very low cost, HD only, entry level, news gathering style all in one device. It's slightly bigger than a Canon XF200, but not by much, and is lightweight and easy to carry around. A step up from consumer grade camcorders, this offers a full complement of manual controls along its body. Three lens rings deal with focus, zoom and iris, each being easy to grab and turn via a textured finish. The lens offers 12 times optical zoom and 24 times with Sony's clear image zoom enhancement, which we'll come back to. The first sign of the low-cost nature of this camcorder is the lens cap, which is detachable and therefore losable, rather than a flip-open hood as found on Sony's more expensive camcorders. As mentioned, all the main controls are on the left side, including customizable buttons, auto and manual toggles, and audio controls. The top row contains three assignable buttons, the other two assignables are on the other side, on the hand grip behind the zoom rocker. A three position ND filter is included for shooting in bright light, so there's no need to screw on filters to the lens, you just flick the switch to what you want. Whilst you don't get the usual three position toggles for immediate access to gain and white balance presets, you can change them by first pressing their button and then clicking this button up or down to change the value. It's more flexible than a preset, but more time consuming. Two channel audio is set from a typical selection of inputs and gain knobs protected behind a transparent flap. A quick to open microphone holder is provided on the top right of the camcorder. Below that you've got the two XLR balanced inputs covered by a rubber flap to keep muck out. No shotgun microphone is included with the camcorder by default, but as usual there is a basic built-in mic at the top of the front handle, which would be okay for gathering generic atmosphere sounds, provided that you cover it with windjammer fur. Alternatively, Sony's MI hot shoe on top gives the option of connecting certain types of microphone from Sony, such as radio mics, directly into the camcorder without needing cables. Another sign of cost cutting comes underneath the flip out LCD screen, the paucity of controls meaning you do a lot of pushing and clicking on the ones that are there, either to watch footage or to change options in the menus, but it's easy enough. Not much on the top handle either, yes a record button and zoom toggle, but no zoom speed control and no mounting holes for accessories. This is a paired back camcorder with just the essentials. The back has the battery compartment, the classic NPF type of cells in use here. Two SDXC card slots provide for dual and relay recording. Don't be fooled by the BNC connector, it's not HD-SDI but composite with stereo analog audio on the phono jacks below. HDMI output is also there. Finally, a 3.5mm headphone jack is sensibly placed and a LANC compatible remote jack is a welcome sight. Over on the hand grip you get just the record button and a charging LED. By far the worst feature is the viewfinder. It is possible to get focus and exposure with it, but it's a nasty display that flickers the colours as you look and it won't come on if the LCD screen is open really inconvenient in live event shooting where you often flick between screen and viewfinder according to the conditions. Luckily the screen isn't so bad, a very traditional Sony camcorder look in the way it's laid out, there's focus peaking in various colours and zebra bars and a histogram to help with exposure. But what do the 50 megabit XAVCS images actually look like? Well, here's a selection, some handheld, some on the tripod, at various f-stops and ND filter combinations, all at 1 50th shutter and mostly zero gain except where noted. I'll leave these to play for a second so you can peer at them and make your own mind up.
The zoom has a 12 times optical range, but because there are so many pixels on the sensor, Sony can crop in on it to give a 24 times effective range without pixel interpolation. They call this clear image zoom, and if we're honest, we're not big fans, you can see when it's turned on and the zoom goes into that 12 to 24 range, we think, but it's better than nothing, perhaps. Three stabilization modes are provided, off, standard and active, the latter of which crops in on the image then using the spare pixels to steady the shot, and it does work well as these tests show. No, it's not a steady cam, but what do you expect? Just before we get to low light testing, have a look at a dark but properly exposed image for any noise. Now, as YouTube compresses everything so heavily, we've blown up a section of the image to help. We think it's reasonably well contained. We've certainly seen a lot worse with our XF200, which we'll come to in a moment. For now, though, take a look at this scene, lit only by the 2 watt LED bulb shown, plus an identical one opposite it and out of shot, and one more just behind the camera. At 15 dB gain, the scene is roughly as our eyes would see it, and given how much we're boosting the signal, we are impressed. When we tested Sony's PXW-X70, it had a similarly impressive signal-to-noise performance under gain, and the NX100 has a similar, if not identical, sensor. Yes, you can see the noise, but it's very good going in our opinion. It's even more impressive when you contrast with how badly Canon's XF200 does, which would be a competitor camcorder at this price range. Set identically as regards iris and gain, the Canon is hugely noisy, and look how badly its auto white balance is doing compared to the Sony. That coat is actually green, and the noise in the Canon image is shocking. Now that said, the Canon's lens does open wider, so what happens if we try that? Matching simply on brightness gives f1.8 on the Canon at minus 3 dB, compared to f2.8 and 9 dB on the Sony, so you'd think the Canon has the edge. But look again, as you turn things up, you can see the Canon's image is still terrible compared to the Sony, despite its wider iris and lower gain. We don't know what magic Sony does in its camcorders to mask noise, but the Canon gets a sound thrashing in noise and colour. In conclusion then, Sony's NX100 has a very decent HD picture. It's got reasonable stabilisation for handheld work and all the necessary manual controls which are easy to use, plus there's inbuilt balanced audio. The downsides are that dreadful viewfinder which won't stay on if the screen's out, and it is a no-frills camcorder, it's kind of what you see is what you get. But the price is astonishingly low, pitching it only just above where the top end of high street holiday camcorders end. And no, it doesn't shoot 4K, nor is there any plan for it to do so. But if you're in education, a video journalist, a web producer, or an in-house corporate marketing department which wants to put some video online without the aggro of changing lenses or messing about with split audio, dealing with shallow depth of field and so on, this is practically a disposable tool for the price that you can pick up and shoot within any scenario immediately and get decent results. So if you're not bothered by 4K but you want a good, controllable HD camcorder at a very sensible price, this is worth a look. Hopefully this was useful, and if so, please click YouTube's like button and subscribe to our channel, which is free. 
Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.